Here are a few ideas that will help people out a little bit. I think so. Main concepts for explaining star evolution, planet formation, according to the general theory of stellar metamorphosis. All my listeners know that star evolution is planet formation. The planet or exoplanet is the ancient evolving or dead star. Since it is known in alternative scientific communities that planet formation is star evolution itself via the general theory of stellar metamorphosis, some basic concepts are needed to piece together the puzzle. Negligence of these concepts and application to any model concerning star evolution, planet formation, are more than likely incomplete or false. There are many assumptions which, ha which have not been questioned. So before any real investigation can be had, we must question them. See that? We must question the assumptions. That's what they don't do in astrophysics. They don't question the assumptions. They keep the assumptions and they build models of reality which have nothing to do with what they're actually studying. As the reader shall see, there are hidden assumptions. These are lots of hidden assumptions available. Taken as fact, of course, they take these assumptions as fact, and you can't really do that, before there was any real investigation of the stars. So basically, they assume these things to be true before they started investigating the stars, and then they built mathematical models and went off into oblivion with them. But here we are, I think I found a lot of these hidden assumptions. The first one is that Earth was always solid and liquid material throughout its evolution. What's actually going on is that Earth was all phases of matter. I think Baz Taylor is working on a video for me overviewing this. In larger proportion earlier during its evolution, this assumption led to hundreds of false conclusions such as Earth forming as is or very close to as is. Basically what happens is the establishment of science wants you to believe that in outer space a bunch of rocks just clumped together and made the earth and then the earth just stayed the same size for many, many billions and billions of years. This is bad. Very, really bad reasoning. What actually happens is, well, I'm going to start at um, blue, giant blue star. What happens is, is that the star cools, collapses shrinks and dies getting smaller and smaller and smaller eventually you just have the rocky metal remains left over in the center these things were once these things but as it cools and dies it transforms and undergoes a metamorphosis so basically, you can see that this is a lot different than what establishment accepts. All because they assume Earth has always been solid and liquid material. Truth is, it was all phases of matter, including super critical and plasmatic and even gaseous matter. Which was, all three states were very much, much more uh, energetic. Here's another one. Earth did not evolve greatly to its current configuration and structure, involving every single chemical and physical law currently known to humanity. It formed as is from preformed rocks via gravity alone. What we have here is every single physical and chemical law currently known to humanity versus, oh, the rocks were just there in outer space and they clumped together. Do you see how horrible this is? Or, I like the word, heinous. This is heinous theory development. And currently, astronomers, astrophysicists, and geophysicists use this heinous understanding. They say, preformed rocks just clump together. Okay, where is the gravitational field? How the rocks clump together? How the rocks form? Rocks are made of chemical combination, or chemical compounds. Where is the pressure at in outer space? Outer space is vacuum. Where is the heat? Where is the refractory material to keep the heat from escaping when the rocks are melting together in outer space? They don't have any of those answers because they assumed Earth did not evolve greatly to its current configuration and structure. Remember, to them, it's just always been like this forever and ever and ever. Yet, when we look in outer space, we see gaseous and plasmatic and energetic objects. Clearly, that's what the Earth was. Number three. All stars are plasma, hot, gas only. This is one of this is the worst kind of assumption. Okay, so what happens when the gaseous matter cools down? Hmm? 
What happens when the gaseous matter cools? It's going to remain gaseous and interject forever? No. As stars age, they cool down. Plasma becomes hot gas. Hot gas becomes supercritical fluid, which then cools down to liquids and solid material. This means stars are comprised of all types of matter in very large proportions as they evolve. Pretty straightforward, don't you think? Here's another horrible assumption that's kept since the 1920s and still taught to this day in the top universities in the world. All stars have visible spectrums. This is bad. Bad, bad, bad. What happens? Well, what if the star cools down to where it can't shine anymore? Oh no. What happens is that they become planets. They call them planets, and they're completely separated from the, the stars. They separate them in their minds with language. It's so weird how that goes down, isn't it? The vast majority of stars do not have spectrums because they have cooled down too much. Astronomers call them exoplanets. Planets, i got to edit that right there. It's weird. And they exist in even larger proportions as do population one stars, which I have defined as plasmatic young stars or stars with visible spectrums. Population one stars, to me, are not Bayes' interpretation of it. Bayes, back in like the 1920s, defined them as... Uh, as opposed to the Big Bang creationist model. And we all know Big Bang is nonsense, so we can get rid of uh, that definition. I overview this in a paper, um, different population stars, according to stellar metamorphosis. It says here, another assumption that they keep, which is really, really, really strange, is all stars are massive like the sun. Or bigger than Jupiter, I should say. And I have here, all stars lose mass and energy in great amounts as they evolve and cool. Yes, this is true. Solar winds, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, they lose a great amount of mass and energy because they're freaking shining. Why isn't this obvious to these people? That's where the energy loss is coming from. They're shining. They're losing mass and matter in huge amounts. And if you do that for billions of years, I guarantee you it's not going to be the same size. It's going to be incredibly small. A lot smaller than what it started out with, that's for sure. It's called conservation of mass and energy. Hello, people. They can start out big and hot like the sun, but will eventually cool and lose the majority of their mass to solar wind, CMA, solar fires, photo evaporation impacts. This also means that as it shrinks, it also loses the angular momentum, which is mass loss, which means its rotational velocity will remain constant. So essentially, you have a large star, okay, and it's spinning around. And when it loses its mass, you would think if it didn't lose its mass, or no, if it, um, how, how am I going to phrase this? Okay, you have a star spinning at a certain rate, and it shines at a certain rate. Now, if it were to speed up and still shine at the same rate, um, actually, let's not do that right now. That's just that's too advanced. I, I, I got I to gotta overview that later. Neptune and Uranus are icy per their ice giant memes, or names, I should say. And that's this is horrible. What Where this came from was like 1800s. This, this came way back in the day when they found out how far away they are from the sun. So they're like, they must be icy, you know. This, this is bad. What happened is the Voyager went and saw them and they emit as much, if not more, energy than they received from the sun. Ice doesn't do that. Ice doesn't do that how does ice emit more energy than it receives from the sun that doesn't make any sense ice no icy bodies would be cold worlds not worlds which emit more heat and energy than they receive from their parent stars neptune and uranus are clearly hot and hellish in their interiors not icy so we have a main philosophy here that's predominant in the astrophysical community that these are ice giants they're not icy at all they're hellish worlds. Way, way, way hotter than the Earth, even. And here's the main assumption. Planets are byproducts of star formation. This is horrible. This came from 1700s, even earlier than the previous one. Planets being byproducts of star formation is old-school um, theorizing that doesn't actually apply 
to nature anymore because of the Kepler finding these exoplanets doing things that were not allowed. It says here, planets are byproducts of stellar evolution. The planet is the ancient star as it evolves and dies. As a star evolves, it cools and cools, it forms one planet, not multiple planets, as it retains its spherical shape, cools and dies. This is a simple Occam's razor. Mother Nature does not waste. In their theory, they have a hot star forming, and then everything else, all their remains, just form around it. Huh? That's dumb. What actually happens is that this star is actually moving through a galaxy, okay? And it adopts objects which are in the way. Okay? These objects are pre-existing older stars, and as it moves through the galaxy, it picks them up, forming systems. These are just older stars. This all didn't form at the same time. And as this one cools and dies, it becomes one of these things. And then, obviously, when this cools and dies, it loses track of all these, and then it just keeps on going. And then this starts orbiting. Once it gets to this level, it will keep on going. And then take up orbit around a different, hotter star. It was a lot younger. And it'll, they have people will call them a planet. It is, it's a cyclical kind of thing here, people. It's not, it's not what 1700 science says it does. It says it is, I mean. Alright, I'll stop at number 8 and make another video. Hang on a second.